Hello, students, and welcome back to Mr. Sandwich Reads. I am, of course, Mr. Sandwich, and today I wanted to read from five brilliant scientists. This is uh, from the publication, or publisher, I should say, uh, Great Black Heroes. The book itself is by Linda Jones. Illustrations here we see by Ron Garnett. Uh, today I wanted to read Ernest Everett Just, a uh, remarkable marine biologist. So you cannot see that. So let me get a little bit closer here. Um, all right. Ernest Everett, just born 1883, died 1941. Let's learn a little bit here about Ernest Everett Just, remarkable marine biologist. Ernest Everett Just, just was born on August 14th, 1883 in Charleston, South Carolina. His parents, Charles and Mary, had two younger children, Hunter and Inez. One day in August 1886, when Ernest was three, there was a terrible earthquake. The earthquake shook Ernest out of bed. Everything crashed around him. Many people in town were killed. But the Just family survived. In a strange way, the earthquake would help to shape Ernest's life. Because the quake damaged the Just's home, they had to move. Many Just, Mary Just, excuse me, Mary Just, and a group of other black families bought some land on St. James Island in South Carolina. A town was built on the land. It was called Maryville after Ernest's mother. Maryville is where Ernest first showed an interest in science. Ernest would grow up to become a well-known scientist of marine biology. Ernest took long walks through the woods in Maryville. He stared at the flowers and the animals. He was very curious about how, how all the life began. One day I'll learn more about these things, thought Ernest, and he did. He attended schools for black children. But Southern black schools were not as good as the schools for white children. Mary just wanted Ernest to have the best education and the best schools were up north. It says here under this picture, the caption is, Ernest took long walks through the woods in Maryville, South Carolina. One day, Ernest heard about Kimball Academy, a high school in Meridian, New Hampshire. His mother sent a letter to the school applying for a scholarship for Ernest. They waited for an answer. Then, Ernest decided to go visit the school instead. At 17 years of age, Ernest sailed off on a ship to New York. He worked on the ship to pay his fare. When I reached New York, I had a $5 bill and two pairs of shoes, Ernest later said. When Ernest finally arrived at Kimball Academy, he found out that he had won the scholarship. Young Ernest was so smart that he finished school in three years instead of four. He graduated in 1803, the top student in his class. He won a scholarship to Dartmouth College in Hanover, New Hampshire. At Dartmouth College, Ernest took every biology class offered. He was most excited to learn about marine animals, animals that live in the sea. He was an excellent student. Ernest graduated from Dartmouth with honors in 1907. After graduation, Ernest looked for a job as a research biologist but those jobs weren't being offered to black scientists. Some, white, some whites didn't believe blacks were good in science. So Ernest took a job, or te took a teaching job, excuse me, at Howard University, an all black college in Washington, DC. Here we see Ernest Just was a top student at Dartmouth. He graduated with honors. Though he enjoyed teaching, Ernest missed learning about sea animals. Soon he had the chance to do both. In 1909, he began studying at the Marine Biology Laboratory in Woods Hole, Massachusetts. Scientists did research on sea animals there. Ernest taught at Howard in the winter and studied at Woods Hole in the summer. He was 26 years old. The young scientist did important work at Woods Hole. He studied the egg cells of sea animals. He learned how the eggs fertilized or developed into living creatures. He discovered which parts of a cell made a creature look the way it did. Other scientists were impressed with Ernest's work. His research appeared in science textbooks and magazines. And here we see at Woods Hole, Dr. Just studied many different kinds of sea life, including the sea urchin. So there you go, octonauts. You got Ernest Everett Just to think. Soon, Ernest had something different to celebrate. On June 26, 1912, he married Ethel Highwarden, a teacher. They had three children, Margaret Highwarden and Marybelle. 
Oh, so it looks like they, this is interesting because my brother actually has my mom's last name and it looks like they did the same thing. They named one of their children High Warden, named after uh, his wife's maiden name. On February 12th, 1915, Ernest Just was honored by the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP. This is an organization that fights for the equal rights of minorities. For his work in biology, the NAACP awarded Ernest the Spin Guard Medal, a new award for outstanding achievements by a black American. Ernest was the first to receive the Spin Guard. Newspapers carried the big story. The award-winning scientist kept working and studying. He attended the University of Chicago in Illinois. When he graduated on June 16, 1916, he was a doctor of zoology, the study of animal life. After a while, Dr. Just became known as the expert on the early life of sea animals. Dr. Just once challenged the work of a well-known scientist, Dr. Jacques Loeb. Dr. Loeb said that he could create new sea animals by adding a chemical to unfertilized eggs in extremely salty water. But Dr. Just said he could create new sea animals by simply adding the seawater. Dr. Just added the seawater to the unfertilized egg cells. Eventually, he looked through his microscope and saw new sea animals swimming around. Even though Dr. Just had achieved a great deal, prejudice prevented him from getting important jobs in the United States. So by the late 1930s, Dr. Just lived mostly in Europe, studying and working in different laboratories. Scientists there respected his hard work, and they didn't treat him badly because he was black. Dr. Ernest Just died from cancer on October 27, 1941, in Washington, D.C. He was 58. He wrote over 60 papers and two books about his great work. And here we see the picture with the caption, Ernest Everett Just was honored by the United States Postal Service. His picture is, is a part of the Black Heritage series. So there you can see the, the stamp for Ernest Just. Marine biologist. Again, this was from Five Brilliant Scientists by Linda Jones. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you learned uh, a bit about uh, Ernest Everett Just and the great work he did. And, and unfortunately, he, and he probably could have done more given the opportunities, but because of uh, discrimination uh, at the time, uh, he, was, he was prevented. Um, so something to keep in mind. And uh, like I said, we learned a little bit more about marine biology and its uh, roots as a uh, science and one of the scientists that helped advance it. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that reading. Keep reading and uh, let me know what's your favorite uh, sea animal. What sea animal would you like to learn about? You can email me at uh, mrsandwichreads at gmail.com. And uh, if you tell me your favorite sea animal, I'll, I'll present a, uh, I'll do another post and talk about sea creatures. Uh, like I said, I've said before, I got a six-year-old. I watch a good amount of octonauts. I we've learned a good deal about sea creatures, fascinating stuff. We have Ernest Everett just to thank. Thank you for listening. Take it easy. Peace.